My man, Bistro, your brother June Archer here. This is 50.com. You're checking out the Winner's Circle, the home for inspiration and motivation to make your dreams come true. Keep it locked right here. Are you ready to win? Yeah. Come join the winning circle. Fuck with the winners, baby. Put up your hands for me, baby. Put them up. And do it like we're supposed to. Ooh. Yeah. Cause we're yeah. gonna uh, win. Consider this the theme song for victory. Shit you say to yourself, you made history. I'm trying to make it feel like the first. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, June Archer. The Winner Circle. This is 50.com. My brother, Bistro here. My man has gone down to ATL from Springfield, Mass, though. You got to represent Springfield. Holy old Mass. Been down to the ATL. You trying to get me shot already. No, 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 no. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to get to that later. <laughs> down in ATL, kind of took over ATL radio. How was that experience coming from New England, going down to Atlanta, and really just really taking over the airwaves? Because a lot of people call you the mayor of the city, mm -hmm. and you're not from there, but they've embraced you. How has that felt over the past couple of years? How long has it been now? I've been there for about 13 years. Mm -hmm. On Well, I was gone for a couple of years, like you said, we'll get to that. But uh, it was a good feeling, man, you know, coming from a, a small city where we were from New England, whatever. You know, I just went down there and believed in myself and did my thing. And, you know, I didn't have anybody there, you know, that I didn't have any family, I didn't have nothing. I just had a dream and the will to win. Now for you, how do you pack up and go to an unfamiliar place? You have the talent, very creative, but how do you get there and get your feet planted to get where you are now? What kind of courage does that take? And what kind of talent mentally and physically does it take to, to make that move? Because there's a lot of people in life that are looking to to make a change. They want to go across the country. They want to just go the next state over. But for you, what was your motivation? How did you make that transition? I mean, I think the key word you said was they want to. I mean, you, it's not, it's, when you want something, the only way to get what you want is to go get it. Hmm. So, I mean, basically, man, you just gotta, I had to get up, take what I had, you know, and you know, my angle is coming from a street perspective, cause you know me, you know what I'm saying? I was in the street heavy. And one day I said, I'm about to die. I'm about to go back to jail. I've been in jail several times. And, you know, I just stopped what I was doing, took all my money, packed up the truck and left. And it was just that easy. It was just that easy. Some people don't get the opportunity. They don't, but you got to make opportunity. Now, when you said you, you had enough, like you packed up, what, what was it? You got locked up a couple times. Mm -hmm. What finally kicked in and said, you know what? Be sure this is not for me, man. Like I, I gotta make it. Cause it's just two different perspectives now. It's some people get back into, you know, recidivism and they're like, you know, I just I am gonna get out here, I'm gonna slang this, I'm gonna hustle. And if I go in, I do my time, I'll come back, and I'm I'm gonna hit the ground running again and continue to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you 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 cut the cycle and said, you know what, I'm done with this. Let me let me make this move. Like, what was it? What was the last the last uh. I mean, straw. it is a cycle. You right? What my last straw was my my cousin Easy on my partner. You know, he he got popped, and um, you know we was working together, and he, and he got put away for ten years. And I was like, shit, you know, that's gonna be me, or you know, I'm not no more special than he is. And the track record of anybody in the street is normally you're gonna go to jail or you're gonna die, right? More than likely, or you're gonna be a drug addict. You know, there's never a, a silver lining or a, a happy ending to it. So. I just said, man, you know, I got talent, you know, I, I love music, I rap, I got a good voice, and, and you know, I need to utilize that. That's something God gave me to get me out of my situation, so it'd be disrespectful not to, to use that, you know? So I just said, hey, let me go for mine and let me see what I can do with it. And as long as I've known you, you've been, you've been that guy. You've been super talented. You're a producer. We worked on a lot of things together. Um, but for the young kid that's trying to get into music or trying to get into radio, what is the best perspective? What's the best way? Because you're super talented. You do voiceovers. You do commercials. Mm -hmm. You produce. Uh, you produce on the, on, the, on, the, on the radio. What is the best angle to come from? Is it ever, is like throw everything against the wall, see if it sticks? Or do you focus on one thing? Or it's just not enough to just focus on one thing? For the, for the kid that's trying to do it now, say, all right, you do these things, but I'm trying to get in the radio and I'm finding roadblocks. I'm finding obstacles mm -hmm. in my way. You know, maybe I'm blocking my blessings. How do they get through that? Well, I mean, I'll give advice that I never had 
or guy. I'm a kind of guy that I'll do everything and let it stick. If you really want something and you know what you want to do, I think it's important that you focus on that because one thing I was called once by um, legendary dude, Jerry Smoking Bees, the master of all trades. You know, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. You know what I mean? And that means you're just doing everything, but you're not laser focused on that one thing that's going to allow you to go back and do all the other stuff. Luckily for me, you know, I do everything that I do at a pretty decent level to where a lot of the things worked out, you know what I'm saying? Right. Radio production, voiceover work, commercial work, DJing, host, you know, so I would tell that person to, you know, really think about it, what it is you're trying to do and, and, and set your goal on it and, and go for that and just go for it and don't stray off to the side because it, it, it kind of might hold you up if you do that. Mm. I want to take you back about a year, a little over a year ago, uh, there was a situation in Atlanta uh, where Guns were drawn, uh, you found yourself in the crossfire. Um, I don't know if you could speak about it, how deep we could go, but I want to really dive into this. Um, I beat the case, baby. We can talk about that's it. what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. There ain't no double jeopardy. Nah. Let's go. Nah. So we, you <laughs> right? know, Bistro had a situation. Got an attorney over here just in case, man. <laughs> just in case. Always got somebody on. Just in case. Um, for you, Rick Ross was supposed to be in the building that night, and he was he on was Hot 97, right? And he yeah. talked about it, and he shouted you out, made sure that you were you were good. Uh -huh. What happened that night specifically, and how important is it? Because you're in these streets, like you, yeah. you're a personality, you're out here, and real things happen to everybody, and bad things happen to good people. Uh, I truly believe you're a good person, and that night was kind of unfortunate, where you got in a gun battle with some undercover cops. I want to talk about it, and kind of talk about how you beat it by just being the person that you are. Because a lot of people don't get out of the situation. Alive. Alive, <laughs> exactly. So. And that's 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 a, another thing that's important. I mean, basically it was Diddy, Ross, uh, album release party, I was DJing, you know what I'm saying? I was having a great time as usual, doing my thing. And um, I come out the club, somebody tried to, you might not know the whole story, somebody tried to rob me outside the club. I'm with two chicks walking to my car. And, um, you know, I just was startled. I'm looking at the dude, he draws his weapon on me, it fires at me into my car. I'm already sitting in the car, he shoots into my car four times. I'm not hit, so I jump out and start busting back at him because that's, you know, I didn't know what else to do, you know what I mean? So in that time, the police came around the corner. They didn't announce themselves. They didn't say nothing. They just came and started shooting at whoever they saw shooting, which was me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I end up exchanging uh, gunfire with them because I don't know who, I don't know. Who's who at this I, point? I just see a bunch of lights and I'm shooting at the lights, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm just going for mines. And, um, you know, it turns out that they were police officers. And then, you know, I ended up getting shot a couple times and, you know, luckily I'm still here to talk about it. But the thing that I want to focus on and, and what, you know, brought me to another level of awareness in my life is that these police officers are acting like savages out here. They didn't do their job. They didn't try to assess the situation. They just saw some blacks and started firing at them because they heard gunfire. They didn't know what was going on. They right. actually shot at the victim. And then the other dude got away. You know what I'm saying? So mm. now it's like, all right, I'm jammed up. So that's basically in a nutshell what, what happened. For you, a lot of these situations are happening on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. How do we combat that perspective that cops have against black and brown men to get them to understand that we're not always doing something wrong? You shouldn't draw your weapon first and ask questions later. I mean, Joe, man, I take a different uh, stand and position. You know, I'm my, my own man. I believe you should arm yourself. You know, I'm not going, I'm not trying to tell nobody else what to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to tell you to go shoot that. Nobody do this, that, and third. But if I had not been armed that day, I would have lost my life. The only reason I'm alive today and sitting here is because I was able to protect myself. Right. Whether it's from the police or whoever. And I don't know the amendment, but you got the right to defend your life, no matter if it's against your own government, right? No matter who it is, if it's the government, the police, whoever's threatening your life, you have the right to defend yourself. I stand on that side. I can't speak for everybody, but you know that's just how I look at it because I don't think we're not, we, we're not respected out here in this country. We're just not, and that's just the way it is. It's not going to change by what we've been doing. And again, I'm not saying the solution is to go start busting on everybody, but I think, I think I made a point clear to the police, right. don't, you know, all right, well, we know what he's about. Right. They might think twice about that shit. Now, if everybody else would act the same, maybe they'll start to look at things a little different. Like, well, damn, let me do this right. 
or you know it's going to go in another direction i don't i don't know the answer bro all i know is what i know and what i believe and you know that's all i can really run with i know why i'm here today right and then i also know why other brothers are not here so that's that's something that is, is starting to really touch me and make me want to speak to kids and, 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 and you know try to get them away from it early if they can but you know at the end of the day i feel like you got to protect yourself man because we're hunted if the conversation went a little differently and you're talking about mike brown you're talking about alton sterling you're talking about uh all these guys and then bistro the radio personality gets in that conversation the prior names is always oh well he stole something or he was guilty of this. Well, he was gangbanging. He was selling drugs. He was selling onesies. Mm -hmm. But then you come down the line, the list, and you see Bistro there. What was he doing? What was he doing? Because we hear him on the radio. Well, they would have made we... something up. Oh, well, he threatened to shot at us. And I mean, the Discovery tape is crazy. If you read, if you watch the Discovery DVD of my case, these they was making me like I was an animal on the news. It's like, oh. A savage, an animal, a cop killer, blah blah blah, and right, and and, and so there's no difference then. No, no, no. It's, it's I could, and the, the only difference, June, is I'm able to talk. You're alive. Back. I'm alive. I'm the only one who can say, Nah, you lying, my dude. How do I know? Because I was there. The DVD with them uh, re reenacting the situation. He raised his gun at us. He shot at us. He had an evil look in his eye. He looked like he. I was like, bro, I just finished DJing for Diddy and Ross. I got two bad. What chicks. am I mad at? <laughs> what I'm am happy. I, mad at? I'm, I just got paid. I got two chicks. I'm about to jump in my bins and bounce. Like, how much happier could you be in life? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that you know, it, it's just those things, man. It, it allowed me to see how they turn the tables on us, man. Because you know, I got a lot of backlash for that. A lot of people's um, perception of me changed. I lost a lot of opportunities. I lost my job, you know? Right. I got fired from a station I've been working crazy with for almost 10 years. You know, I lost a lot behind that. And they let you go. Yeah. Only because they didn't want to get caught up in, in what they believe might have been the, the right thing, but you don't know. Like, when the smoke clears and you see what the truth is. Yeah. They knew I, what the truth was. But sometimes people fear Yeah, law. it's corporate. It's corporate. Yeah. Uh, for you, though, now that the smoke is cleared, mm -hmm. what do you tell these young people out here that, you know, they want to defend themselves and you have the right to bear arms, but there's a way to go about it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, and when you get pulled over, I, I just saw a police video the other day, and this is why it's fresh on my mind, where someone was in a car, a car chase, the, the assailant got out the car and just started firing shots at the police. So their lives are in danger too. Yeah. And I understand that is is a way to go about it. But for the young men who are like, why'd you pull me over? Is there a behavior that we should educate our young people on to kind of get them to understand the triggers of what yeah. may allow a cop or, or a state trooper to, to react that way? I think it all boils down to respect. You know, speak respectfully, of course, and they should speak respectfully back. Now, they got to reciprocate that same thing. You got these cops out here that's crazy. Like, they got these power trips and they things is wrong with them up here. They might not have had clothes in high school and they didn't get no girls and now right. they're mad and they got power. So now they, you know, that that's the kind of thing that makes them cops act like that. Right. I mean, sad to say, they don't all act the way they should, man. And, and you really roll in the dice when you get pulled over. So I don't have an answer for that. All I can say is, man, pray, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like when I get pulled over, I take my gun out, take my clip out, and I put it on the dashboard. And then I'll be like, I have a uh, weapon officer. And what are you pulling me over for? You know what I'm saying? I try to go that route. Right. I don't want nobody saying I reach for nothing. Because right. the gun's taken apart. It's all the way on the dash. Right. I know I did not reach for nothing. Playing offense instead of defense. Yeah. You got to have a plan. I mean... You got to, man, especially blacks today. You got to you gotta think ahead because, I mean, you just seen it. The dude, the, uh, the cop in Texas shot the boy in, in the head. Tried to say that he was backing up his car, getting ready to run him over. When they check out the police cam, they was driving away. And he shot the kid in his head, a 14, 15 year old kid. Well, dead man tells no tales, so. Exactly, but living ones do, so that's why I'm here. And that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. You've been in the game 20 something years. You got a book. I want to talk about it. Give me the title so the people know they can check for it. It's coming out this year. Yeah. And why you felt the need to, to write this book. It's uh, The book is called The Beast Within. It's uh, Basically, it's an outline of my life. You know, I think I'm now looking back, especially upon writing a book, it's a pretty interesting life. And um, I'm not alone. It, it, it's basically uh, for you to get an in-depth look to someone who 
was born in, in damn near poverty uh, situations and was able to climb up and rise up. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing can stop you. Um, there's nothing that I haven't done. So there's no excuse at the end of the day is for people to succeed and be somebody. You know, you know me for a long time. You know, it took me my time to get where I'm at. But you knew me when I was whatever. But you never said, don't do that. You got to learn on your own and you graduate on your own through life. And I just want to help somebody read my story and say, well, damn, he was locked up. Damn, he got shot. He got stabbed. He, you know, sold drugs. He did this. But he still was able to come out of that. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to help people come out of it at their own pace, though. It's not a preach, preachy book. It's just showing you that it can happen. You know what I'm right. Saying? So, yeah. You're cool with the likes of Jeezy, Rick Ross, Diddy. Who has inspired you the most? DJ Khaled is, is, is a good friend of yours. Who has inspired you um, to continue to keep going? And who's been your best interview that you've ever done on radio? It's funny, I'm not trying to be funny, but 50 Cent is my, my guy. <laughs> and I mean this with all sincerity because I, 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 I am 50 Cent. 50 Cent somebody that I looked at and was like, that's me. And look at him. If he can do it, I can do it. He got shot up, he sold drugs, he did this, that, and the third, and he really did it. It's not like he's Fabricating saying this, anything, he's not right? making this up. You know, I did the research, I know. So 50 Cent, absolutely my best interview. Me and him sat down and talked. Um, for a long time, and um, it, he's really insightful. He gives information, knowledge. He's not afraid to share nothing with you. And, and I, I really um, pattern myself after him, man, as far as the will to win, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, there's just no excuse except for being lazy. Like, if anything goes wrong, it's really probably your fault. Mm. And things mm. ain't gonna go right like that. Every time. But you can't stop, you gotta keep going, like right now, Gotta keep going. I got fired, okay, I kept going. I got another gig, I got fired again. I keep going, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's gonna happen, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you gotta just keep going. Where does that hunger come from though? Man, I don't, I, it's just the will to win. I know who I am inside, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm destined to be something great for someone else to see and say I can be great like him, just like 50 did for me. It's just strange that we here, but I would have right. said that no matter what, Right. believe me. Um, and it's also shit from being broke, from knowing what it's like to not mm. have and be hungry and you know that that's scary. You know what I'm saying? That's scary. <laughs> Scarier than going to jail. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out the next book for you. Yeah. Um, with this book, how important is uh, being transparent uh, that you're able to inspire, and motivate someone? It, it's man. It's it's. I didn't realize it until I got into the book. Like I'm learning about myself through this book. As it's, you're writing it's it. It's therapeutic for me writing this book. And I talked to Fat Joe about this. He's writing a book too. And me and him was going back and forth. Man, I remember I used to throw bricks off the roof and you know, he was like, are you crazy? He was like, man, you know what I did too. You know what I'm saying? But it's therapeutic. You're learning about yourself. And I think being transparent is important because at the time, somebody might be acting stupid or doing something stupid or even selling drugs or whatever at the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a knucklehead or stupid. Right. That's just where they're at in life. Okay, now read this book and see how I came away from that to this. Hopefully that'll inspire them like, yo, damn, I think I might need to do something. You know, I don't care what you do. Right, right. You like cooking, you like washing cars, you open a car wash, whatever you, your passion is and you find it, Follow that, and that's what I hope I can help somebody just look inside themselves and see that I'm willing to give myself, and hopefully I can help somebody else with it. Well, you're a chef. Yeah, I you am. do voiceovers. Yeah, I do. You're working on a book to to drop it. You're a radio personality. You got Bistro.com where you do your own news. What's next for Bistro? Oh yeah, the news thing is is is, is coming through. Hopefully, uh, we make something out of that. But the funny thing, June, is I cook a lot, and I show it on you know my Instagram at Bistro. But the funny thing about the cooking, people don't know, I learned how to cook in jail. I got a culinary arts degree in jail. So that's why I like to cook. You know, these mm. are the things that you don't know about a person until you get to read and, and understand like, damn, you be cooking your ass off. Yeah, well, guess where I learned how to cook, nigga? They be like, oh, okay. I didn't know you was in jail before. Right. Now you do. You know, you can, my thing is you just don't know a person's journey, man. And I think it's important to, to reach out and, and hopefully just let people know that man, you can do what you got to do. Don't mm -hmm. sit here and make excuses, you know, just keep fighting. For you, how important is it 
for us to have positive and inspirational motivational images on television um, these days with everything that's going on and no disrespect to all the people that we know on Love and Hip Hop and Housewives of whatever town it's in next, next season. For yeah. you, how important is it to have more positive, uplifting images for our young people so that they could get to the next level? I think that's the most important thing because you got somebody sitting in Utah who has never been nowhere. They believe in this stuff, man. They watching these, they're watching uh, hip hop. I'll say, uh, what is it called? I don't even watch it. Loving Hip Hop Atlanta. <laughs> right. And I've been approached to be on it. Oh, nah. They watch this and they think that's really how it is. When I come home and visit, yo, that's crazy. I'll be watching Loving Hip Hop in Atlanta. So I'm just like, that's not, that's not real. Like, right. you know, so they're kind of brainwashing these people into acting crazy and also inviting more people to act crazy just to get that 15 minutes of fame. Right. And that's bad. I mean, hopefully, uh, you know, we can change that. But I mean, as long as somebody needs some money and, you know, there's people are willing to, to Sacrifice their yeah, souls, sell themselves short sometimes, and that's the money is you know the root of the evil. But I don't know, man. It's just, it's just you got to be a strong person, know what's right, what's wrong, and you know, and, and go on your own path. That's that's what I believe. Let's leave with the best piece of advice you ever got. The best piece of advice I ever got. Uh, what I said earlier. Man, focus on one. Your, your strength. Focus on that. Allow it to open the door for you, and then you can branch off and do whatever you want. 50 Cent started rapping first. He's an actor now. He does films, he produces, blah, blah, blah. But his focus, mainly, first of all, was whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? Focus on that, get yourself where you need to be, and then you can branch off and create multiple uh, streams of income for yourself. And that's important. Listen, you heard it here. This is 50.com. This is the Winner Circle, my man Bistro, your boy June Archer. Listen, go for what you know. If it's in your heart, make it happen. Don't let any obstacle get in your way from your dreams becoming a reality. But you got to understand reality versus entertainment. Some of y'all are getting caught up on this black box, watching and listening to static noise and don't really realize that you are blocking your own blessings. Mm. So get out of your own way. You know what, too? You could be a contractor, a lawyer, a doctor. There's all kinds of things to do. Don't let that brainwash you as well. I think that's something that's important, too. The Winner Circle, here. This is 50.com. We out.